So it's important that you have the right ball for your truck um, and hitch. The balls, the most common is probably two inches, but make sure that your trailer and your ball match up. This is a two inch coupler and it's meant for a two inch ball, um, but these are easy to replace and fix and alternate. So some people have more than one of these at home, um, but this is the two inch and this is typically what we use. So the first thing you're gonna do when you have your trailer is you're gonna lower the trailer onto the ball. Then you're gonna swing the, um, the tongue wheel, the stand, out of the way. So obviously it's, it's horizontal and it's not in the way anymore when you're riding. Then you're gonna put that lever down. It's good practice to spray this on occasion with WD-40 or uh, T9 or any kind of lubricant just to make sure it's always working properly. Then you're gonna take a lock and lock that so it doesn't come out. That keeps the ball locked in the trailer so it doesn't pop out. As a safety measure, you have to use these and you're gonna use these cables. And you're gonna make sure that you hook them on either side, but you have to cross them in the middle. And the reason you cross them is so if for some reason this thing were to pop off, the cables would catch it and it would allow you to at least get off the road to safety without having this thing hit the ground and just, just gash through all the pavement. So it's an, it's an important safety feature. Uh, the second thing you do here is you have to make sure you connect the lights. Now, this is the, this is the uh, male end from the trailer. You have to put it into a female end and usually where you get those is at trailer parts or any kind of marine store. Um, probably most hardware stores as well, or an auto store. And basically what you do is you just put that in and then usually every car or truck has an adapter. Make sure you have enough slack in this to allow for turning. And then you're good to go. The only other thing you need to do and make sure you have is a, is a trailer uh, tag, license plate. What I do on mine is I have it magnetic. I bought these off of Amazon. Um, they're great and it sticks right there. That way you don't really have to mess around with the, the tag being in the water and because what happens is that over time the water rusts the hardware and the, you lose your tag. So this is a good way to do it. There's a bunch of other ways but that's what I find works the best for me. And now the boat is at least the front part here is set up for trailering. Let's go to the stir and let me show you that. Okay, when trailering a boat, one of the important things in the, is you have to have it tied down, it's the law. So in the case of this, this is a custom trailer for this boat, which is so sweet. It's made by Ameritrail. In my opinion, they make one of the best trailers out there. But they have these, these, these ratchet straps, basically they're, they're built in and they're awesome. So. These are super snug, they're tied in. There's one on each side, and that allows the boat to be super secure when trailering. Because sometimes when you hit bumps and stuff, the boat will move a little bit, and this, this keeps it from bouncing around, okay? Um, I put the plug in, so the plug is ready to go, so when I dip it in the water, it's not gonna take on water and sink. The motor is tilted up, so it's not gonna drag. Now, when you do trailer, uh, long distances, I put a block of wood in there and then trim it down so there's something cushioning the uh, tilt and trim motor from bumps in the road. Um, some motors have a built-in lever that holds it and then some people buy a bracket that mounts from this part of the motor to the trailer. But I just use a piece of wood which seems to work just fine. Uh, the last thing I wanna tell you about when it comes to trailering is the most important and that is the hubs. Hubs make everything. They make all the difference in the world. If your hubs are not properly taken care of, 
you will burn out all the bearings and then you'll have to replace the whole wheel and that's a nightmare. And it happens, it happens all the time. So the key thing is to make sure that you always have grease, enough grease injected in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the hubs. Now on this trailer, and I'm sure other ones, they come with a, um, a product called Vortex Hubs. This is the actual logo, if you can see that right there. And they have a 100,000 mile guarantee. So what they are is they're, the grease is in here, you unscrew this, and you can access the, uh, the hub and the grease and all, but once it's filled, you just put this cap back on, and it lasts a long time. Now I've driven for two years all over the state of Florida with this thing, and it has been amazing. So these things work great. So that's pretty much it. Other than that, um, I highly recommend Boat US for their trailer program. So if you do have a problem, they can come meet you. It's part of the insurance. Uh, and then uh, no charge, just take care of you. You know, if you need more air, new tire, whatever, um, they'll take care of it. If you need to tow your boat somewhere, they'll take care of that too. Uh, it's a real good peace of mind. Otherwise, it's always important if you're gonna go long distances to carry a jack. Um, and maybe, obviously, you want to make sure your spare wheel is easily accessible and you can get the lug nuts off. Um, so if you have to change a tire, you can. But that's basically it. We'll talk to you later. All right, you guys. First thing you're going to do when you're trailering a boat is you got to make sure you have enough clearance uh, when you make turns so that the boat clears certain things because when you're trailering anything especially a boat um, you really have to turn a little bit wider when you make a turn that way when you go around it <clears throat> the boat doesn't like hit the curb or hit the object at the corner or whatever so just that's number one is make sure that when you're turning you're a little wider than normal just so the uh, the trailer doesn't hit anything the second thing is you want to frequently check out the trailer. You want to make sure that the trailer, by looking in the rear view mirror or even cracking the windows to listen, doesn't have any issues. I've had it sometimes where um, there's been a squeak or there's been something in the rubbing and uh, I never would have known that if I hadn't opened the windows. So a lot of times you just, it's good to open the windows and just, uh, and just listen. So. Uh, the third thing that's very important, and it's not as big of a deal on this boat because it's so light, but with most boats, they're very heavy. And uh, even though they have brakes in the trailer, you gotta make sure you give yourself enough clearance when you're stopping um, so that you're not too close to the, to the car in front of you because it absolutely will make a huge impact, especially if the, if the road is wet. Um, so you wanna give yourself extra space. So, Making sure that when you make turns, you, uh, you're wide on the turns. The other thing you want to make sure of when you're trailering is you want to make sure that you account for the clearance. A lot of boats have T-tops, and we've all seen it on the Qualified Captain where people literally go through a drive-through. They, they just don't, they forget that they're towing something that has a high clearance. They hit a power line, they hit whatever. Um, and it causes problems. So, you know, when you're towing a boat, that's a big issue. So okay, you guys, I'm about to go put this boat into the water. And uh, before I do, I want to kind of show you what goes through, or tell you what kind of goes through my mind and what to look out for when you're, when you're um, launching a boat. So I'm at my community boat ramp, which is so sweet because you don't have to deal with crowds. It's much, le much less stressful. Uh, but the concept is still the same. What I'm gonna do, is first thing I'm doing is I'm looking at the conditions. This, this particular ramp has direct westerly exposure, so all the boat wakes from the intercoastal out there and any kind of a sea breeze or west wind really can make this pretty choppy in here. So I try to, uh, to look at any traffic out there to see if any big boat wakes are coming before I launch so that I don't, I don't damage the boat or trailer when I'm doing it. Um, the second thing is, I'm going to go through this process and make sure that the boat's ready to be launched. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the back and I'm going to unhook the tie down straps on either side.
I'm gonna check to make sure the plug is in and it's in. I wanna make sure that there's nothing preventing the motor from being trimmed down once I put it in the water. I also wanna make sure that all the dock lines are already on the boat, and they are. I have a four-wheel drive truck, so I wanna make sure it's in four-wheel drive. Um, the other thing is, is that boat ramps are inherently slippery, so slippery, especially during the summer months. There's just like a slime that builds up uh, on the part that's usually submerged. And if, it, if it's the wrong ramp or whatever, and you hit that, it is literally slicker. It's like, it's as slick as, as fish slime on ice. It's, I mean, you're definitely going down. So you gotta be careful. And you also wanna make sure that your truck, your back wheels or whatever wheels you're using that are driving the truck, aren't in it either, because that could cause problems. So right now the tide's low, so there's a lot of exposed ramp, so there will be probably some slippery stuff, but I'm in four-wheel drive, so I should be okay. Um, the other thing is if you have four-wheel drive, make sure you're using it because you often see trucks that slip into the water from a boat ramp, and a lot of times it's from the brake failing or the ramp's pretty steep or whatever, and they're just in two-wheel drive, and that doesn't really do anything. So four-wheel drive is much better. Um, anyway, so we'll get started here and we'll see how it goes. Now I know when to stop, when the boat starts to float and bounce like that, that's your sign. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna walk around and see how slippery this is. It's not too bad. I got my shoes to walk later. First thing you do is you unhook the chain and then you slowly release the boat. Now this is a much easier exercise and a much better exercise if you have someone with you so they can drive the truck while you launch the boat, especially at a crowded boat ramp. But what I'm doing here is I'm just getting on the boat. Lowering the motor. Okay, now I'm just gonna slowly back off the trailer. Sometimes you give it a little gun to get it going. And now I'm gonna dock at the dock and that's all there is to it. <laughs> 